Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm starting this tutorial off with Smashbox's 24 hour photo finish shadow primer. This is what I have been reaching for lately when I want a base that's gonna help my eye makeup stay on but nothing too opaque. Then I'm going in with Maybelline's The Blush Nudes Palette and the first shade I am using here is a light shimmery champagne shade and I'm taking that on a flat shader. This is from Made You Look by Lex here on YouTube and I'm placing that on my inner corner. Next, using the fluffy side of a dual-ended IT Cosmetics brush, I'm going into the medium matte mauve in this palette and running that through my crease for some light definition. Moving on to the shadow that goes on the inner half of the eye, I'm going into the shimmery pinky copper using that same flat shader from Made You Look and I'm applying that, just patting it directly on the first half of my eye. Then switching to a fluffy angled brush from Eddie Funkhauser, I'm going into the darkest pink shade in this palette and putting that on the outer half of my eyelid. And you can't forget about a brow bone highlight. I'm using the same flat shaders before, going into the lightest frosty shade in this palette and I'm flipping the flat shader over so that I don't get the excessive shimmer from the rest of the shades on my brow bone highlight because I want that to be relatively subtle. Next, to add some drama, I'm going into the deepest shimmery purple and using a Bedellium Tools 766 brush. This is a powder that you have to be pretty heavy handed with to get the pigmentation that you're seeing here, so I recommend really rubbing your brush in that powder and then you will get the kind of color payoff you're seeing here. Last for the shadows, I'm going in with the two shimmery taupe shades in this palette and running that along my lower lash line. For liner, I'm sticking to basic black. This is Etude House's Play 101 pencil in the shade one. It's a basic cream finish black that I'm using to line my waterline as well as smudge across my upper lash line. So first I will apply it and then I take a really thin, precise smudger brush to blend that liner into the smoky wing I created in the step before. Last for the eyes is, of course, mascara. This is Aveda's Mascara in the shade Earth, which is actually a deep chocolate brown. I wanted to try for a slightly softer look for the lashes with this look, and I really like how this turned out. And on to the rest of the face. This is a product that I am so excited about, but not quite ready to review yet. It's a customizable palette from Mascara Cosmetics that includes everything you need basically for a full face. It includes contour, highlight, illuminator, and blush. So right here, I'm applying the contour first. I find it easiest to do this first because if it gets a little too out of control, it's easier to go in with the highlight to make it a little bit more subdued. For that, I am using the Real Technique Sculpting Brush, and you can see I'm applying it where I typically would apply contour in the hollows of my cheeks, up into my temples, and along my hairline, up into even the center of my forehead, as well as below my jawline. And these are cream products, so they have not only pigment, but also coverage as well. So if you're wondering where my foundation step went in this video, it is not gonna happen. I am instead using the combination of the products in this palette to not only create a base, an even base for my face, but also contour as well. Next, you could probably guess, is highlight. This is a shade that is a little bit closer to my natural skin tone, just a shade or two lighter, and I'm using an angled flat top kabuki brush from BH Cosmetics to apply that basically everywhere I didn't put the contour shade, taking a little bit of extra care to work right up to where that contour shade is and blend the two together. Then in the event that highlighting toned down the contour I had a little bit too much, I will go back in like I am now with that same Real Technique sculpting brush and reinforce that contour just a little bit. On the average day, this kit gives me plenty enough coverage in my under eye area, but while I was filming this, they needed a little bit of extra help. So here I am going in with Becca's under eye brightening corrector. This I am just trying out, don't really have an opinion on it yet, but I wanted to give it a go in this video. But then I'm following that up with a product that I absolutely know I love. I featured it in a recent favorites video, and this is Becca's Ultimate Coverage Concealing Cream. Mine is in the shade Praline, and I am just using a finger to pat that in my under eye area. I really find that working with my hands with this concealer helps to warm it up a little bit and make it easier to blend. 
Next, I set it all with my trusty ambient lighting powder in dim light from Hourglass, and I'm using the same angled kabuki brush that I used to apply the highlight shade in the mascara palette to pat that, mostly focusing on my under eye area because I love the fresh dewy finish that the cream compact gives the rest of my complexion, but it definitely needs to be set in my under eye area. Next up is blush, going back into that mascara palette using the same Real Technique sculpting brush, and I'm applying the blush shade that I chose, which is Dahlia. It's this beautiful bright pink, very pigmented though, which is why I patted some off on the back of my hand. You can see here it's still left plenty on the brush to cover both of my cheeks, and I'm just patting that in to give a really nice soft flush. And last for the face is Illuminator. Because this is not only a shimmery, but also dewy cream highlighter, I am using the Real Techniques Deluxe Crease Brush to precisely apply that on the tops of my cheekbones and down the bridge of my nose. Then I will go in with a larger brush to blend and stipple that out across the rest of the face. Otherwise, I have had this end up a dewy mess on my combination complexion, but used in moderation, it's absolutely gorgeous. And last, of course, to finish this entire look off are the lips. I'm using using LA Splash's Smitten Lip Tint in the shade Charmed, giving my lips one coat of that because that's really all you need for a completely opaque, long-lasting finish. That's all you need to create this look, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!